Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students welcome to today's lecture we have been over last few lectures discussing the principles and postulates of quantum mechanics so far we have discussed three postulates of quantum mechanics the first postulate of quantum mechanics told us that for any quantum mechanical system there exists a state function that completely specifies or completely defines or describes the state of the system that means everything you need to know about the system is out there in this state function or wave function the second postulate told us that if you want to measure any classically observable quantity for every classical observable in quantum mechanics there exists an operator and in the third postulate it said that when you make a measurement corresponding to a quantum mechanical operator a the only values that will ever be observed are actually the eigen values of operator a so in this context we learned how to determine eigen functions and eigen values of different operators because the eigen values are the only quantities that are going to be observed in an experiment the question now that we can ask is that that if the system is an eigen function of the operator then it is all right then when we make a measurement we actually get the result as the eigen value but what if the system or the state of the system is not an eigen function of the operator a because we have seen that for a given operator there are only a few uh, functions that we can define as an eigen functions but there will be a large number of functions that would not actually be the eigen function of this operator a in that sense in that case what can we do that means if the system if the state of the system is not an eigen function of the operator and i make a measurement corresponding to operator a what will be the outcome to answer this question we actually require the help of another postulate and this is what would be the theme of today's discussion this brings us to the next postulate that is postulate number 4 which says that if you have a system which is described by a state function a wave function psi which is normalized if you have that system then the average value then the average value of this observable that is that corresponds to this operator a is given by this relation where uh, the left hand side is the way we denote the average value uh, or or also this is also called as expectation value the left hand side of this expression is what is known as the average value or the expectation value this quantity is also called as expectation value or average value the right hand side shows how we can determine or uh, obtain this expectation value this is the relation that that we have to uh, remember in today's class this is simply an integral where the psi star is the complex conjugate of the st state function psi is the state function a is the operator that i am currently interested in if i want to determine what is the average value or the expectation value of me measurement when i measure observable a the answer is that i must evaluate this integral this expression holds the answer to the question that we asked that if the system is not an eigen function of the operator a then what would be the outcome of this uh, measurement please remember when we are telling about this expectation value or average value we have a one particular thing in our mind in quantum mechanics we know that we, we when we do a measurement on an uh, on a system we get an uh, outcome and that outcome is an eigen value how does this average value or the expectation value come into picture we are often use average value when we have different measurements and different expectations or different outcomes and at the end we might want to express the uh, 
the conclusion of this experiment as some kind of an average. For example, when you have a test in your uh, in your class, each of you get some marks and to know how overall the class performed, one can calculate the average of the marks. So, this is sim simply uh, something very similar. If we want to measure a classical observable, we make many many me uh, measurements. In quantum mechanics, there lies a subtle difference between uh, the two things. One is that we do not measure multiple times the same observable on, a same, on the same system. Rather, what you do is that we prepare many copies of identically prepared system and make a one time measurement of that observable on each of these systems. So, when I do this, when I make one time single time a measurement of a uh, of a classical observable on a multiple on a multiple on multiple copies of an identically prepared system i get many outcomes and the average or the expectation value of that entire set of experiment is given by this operator a we would continue this discussion by uh, considering two cases suppose i have my State, uh, state function is given by, by x here, uh, um, excuse me, the state function is given by uh, psi here. In the first case, I see that let psi be an eigen function of operator A. So, I define, so this is my operator A, let me define that operator A has this eigen function f n with, with an eigen value of a n. We already know that if operator A is a Hermitian operator, then it always has a complete set of orthonormal uh, eigenfunctions. So, this f n is one of these f i's, where f i's form a complete set of orthonormal uh, eigenfunctions and a n at the corresponding eigenvalue, uh, where, where we all also know that the eigenvalues of Hermitian operator uh, are real. So, a n re is real and f n is one of these uh, eigenfunctions from this complete set of orthonormal eigenfunction. So, suppose psi the state of the system is described by f n which is actually one eigenfunction of the uh, of the operator a. In that case, what would be the average value or the expectation value of operator a? We simply have to evaluate this integral. We see that since the state of the system is f n, so I write f n star here, the operator a, the function f n and then I evaluate this integral over all available space. Now, when I see here operator a acts on f n, I know that f n is an eigen function. So, therefore, the result of this operation is simply a n f n d tau a n is eigen value which is a constant, I can bring it out of the integration and when I look at this quantity over so here, this is f n star multiplied by f n and I am integrate, integrating over all the space. So, I know f n is an eigen function of operator a. So, it must be a well behaved function and if it is a well behaved function, I can always normalize it and if we are, it is a normalized function. So, there therefore, the value of this is 1 and I am left with a n. So, what does this uh, exercise tell me? This tells me that if the state of the system is defined by a, a single eigenfunction by an eigenfunction of this operator, then the average value of this operation uh, uh, operation of this operator is a n and only a n. And what is a n? A n is actually the eigenvalue corresponding to the eigenfunction f n. We will compare this result with another case where psi is actually not an any eigenfunction f n, psi is any other arbitrary function. But we know that if we have another uh, any arbitrary function psi, we can always express it as a linear combination of the complete set of eigenfunctions f i, because f i is are eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator A and this, are, this set of eigenfunctions they form a complete set of orthonormal eigenfunctions. 
So, therefore, psi if it is not equivalent equal to any one of these eigenfunction, I can always express it as a linear combination of where c i are the coefficients in this linear combination and f i are individual eigenfunctions of operator A. So, when this holds good, let us evaluate the expectation value of operator A. So, you see I would put now the place uh, here is psi star. So, psi is given as this uh, lin linear combination of C, uh, f i's. So, I am expressing it as a sum and I am using a, a different index here c k star f k star because this is the place for the complex conjugate. Then I put the uh, operator A and then I put psi. and then I integrate it. When I see here, I see that I have an I have to do an integration, but in this integral I see that there are two summation signs one over k another over i. So, when I expand it you would see that I have many uh, f k a, uh, k would go from 1 to uh, as many. So, would, I would have f 1 plus f 2 plus f 3 all complex conjugate and in the right hand side I will have f 1 plus f 2 plus f 3 each multiplied by some coefficient. So, therefore, I have many terms I can uh, sim, uh, rewrite this by bringing this summation signs and the coefficients outside of the integration c k star c i and then I am left with f k star a f i d tau. So, I brought c k star and c i outside. I kept f k star which is an eigenfunction of operator a f i which also is an eigenfunction of operator a inside this integration because these are the functions that the operator can act on and then they will have dependence on this variable. So, I have to keep them within the integration and since c k and c i they are mere coefficients. So, I can bring them out of the integrations because they are anyway going to be constants. Uh, when I look at this this term over here I see that a operator a when it acts on function uh, function f i since f i is also an eigen value uh, I am sorry f i is an eigen function of operator a its outcome of operator a s action on f i is going to be eigen value which is a i multiplied by f i. So, therefore, c k star c i and then when I, I apply a on f i I get a i which is again a constant. So, therefore, I am bringing it out because this is an eigen value and I am left with f k star f i d tau. This integral we already have seen. What is this? This is an overlap integral between two eigen functions f i and f k. We know that f i and f k are two eigen functions of a Hermitian operator A. So, they, they are orthonormal. So, that means, I can replace this with a Kronecker delta function. I continue my discussion here. So, I have k i c k star c i a i delta i k. If you remember this Kronecker delta, when i is equal to k, the value is 1. If for all other possibilities when i is not equal to k, this will this is 0. So, therefore, when I have two sums, let us say I expand the sum uh, over k. So, I see only one value of k will survive only when k is equal to i, then delta i i will become 1. For all other values of k, delta i k will become 0. So, therefore, the net effect of this summation over k is simply that this only one term will survive and that term, term will be when i equals k. And when i equals k, this value will become 1. So, therefore, I can simplify it further by telling it 
this this all the summation they will only uh, survive only only when k is i so i have ci star ci ai or further simplify it as ci square ai so this is my expectation value or the average value of a measurement of a when the state function is not an eigen function of the operator a if the state function is an eigen function of operator a i get the outcome of this experiment as only one eigen value and that is an but when the state function is not an eigen function of uh, operator a i make measurements on many identically prepared system and each time i will get some values but it is not any arbitrary value the outcome outcomes of this experiment are still a i's the eigen values of this operator a because remember postulate 3 said that when you make an make a measurement only allowed observables are the eigen values and nothing but the eigen values of that operator a so operator a's eigen values are a i so therefore even when the system is not an eigen function of that operator and i make measurement of corresponding to that operator i am still going to get a uh, eigen values as the outcome of this experiment, but now there is something else over here the c i star c i uh, square actually provides me an idea about what is the probability of observing this a i when I carry out this experiment. So, that means when the state function is an eigen function I have only one possible outcome and that is the eigen value. When the state function is not an eigen function I do the measurement I will still get the eigen values, but in different distribution some 30 per 30 percent of the time I get eigen value 1, 20 percent of the time I get eigen value 2, 20 percent of time I get, I get eigen value 3 so on so forth. So, the c i star uh, c i square actually gives me the probability of observing the, an eigen value as, as an outcome of this experiment. So, this is a very critical difference between what, what I get when the state function is an eigen function or when the state function is not an eigen function. Here from this discussion you see therefore, the c i's are an import uh, are, are, are important quanti uh, quantities and we will now discuss how we can get these c i's. Remember uh, we had we defined our wave function psi as a linear combination of c i a phi. So, the wave function the state function is expressed as a linear combination of the eigen functions which form a complete set. So, I want to know about what is this c i. So, to do to get that I carry out the following evaluation I evaluate the overlap integral of f k star f k is another eigen function is one of these uh, eigen function from the complete set of uh, orthonormal eigen functions of operator a I want to evaluate this particular integral this particular overlap integral. So, when I do this you see f k star and psi is I am expressing now as the I will expand it now c i f i. So, I see this So, you know I can bring this uh, summation sign outside and this is the overlap integral between of two eigen functions of the same operator same Hermitian operator. So, therefore, they are going to be ortho orthonormal. So, I am replacing them uh, this integral as a Kronecker delta I know when i equals k Kronecker delta value is 1 when i is not equal to k this value is 0. So, therefore, even if I have a summation over here only one term will survive and that term will be when i is equal to k and in that case I will have only c c k. So, in the in this summation term only one term would survive when i is equal to k. So, in that case delta k k becomes 1 and then I am left with this coefficient c k. So, I actually have some idea about this c k which is actually the coefficient of uh, uh, lin uh, coefficient in this linear combination uh, that I am expressing uh, the, the wave function with and c k is the coefficient corresponding to the eigen function f k. 
Now I have I got some idea about this CK. What does this tell me? This tells me that when I do a linear com when I have an arbitrary uh, function psi and I express express it as a linear combination of uh, the eigenfunctions of uh, from a complete set of orthonormal functions. In that case, the coefficients corresponding to an eigenfunction is simply the overlap of this arbitrary function with that particular eigenfunction. So, this overlap integral gives me an idea about this coefficient c k. Uh, we would do one more thing to get some more idea about this coefficient c k. We know that this psi the state function is a well behaved function. So, therefore, I can always normalize suppose if I if psi is a, a, a normalized uh, state function then I can write this expression because psi is, is normalized. Now, what I would do is that I would ex, I would uh, expand this psi as linear combination. So, psi star you would notice that when I have two expansions to carry out I, I, cho I am choosing two different indices for this expansion. Uh, that is just to make this uh, derivation very general because if I keep the both the in, uh, indices same i then I will lose out many other terms. So, this is important to remember when I have more than uh, two expansions to carry out I should choose two different indices. So, that even when i and k are not equal then also I can uh, have those terms in my expression. So, again I uh, bring out the two uh, summation signs uh, k uh, i I also bring out uh, C k star C i and keep uh, uh, excuse me that is there has to be a, a complex conjugate here because this is psi star. So, I have f k star f i d tau and we already have seen this quantity uh, a, a few times. So, you know this is simply Kronecker delta. and the Kronecker delta will survive only for one term and that is when, when i is equal to k and then you would see that this term is, is simply this. And what is the right hand side? The right hand side is, is 1. So, I can write this as a general rule that if my wave function is normalized then the sum of the square of this coefficient is is 1. So, now we I have got complete information about this uh, uh, expressing an arbitrary function as a linear combination of eigenfunctions of a com complete set of uh, orthonormal eigenfunctions. What is it? That when I carry out this linear uh, when I express this arbitrary fu function as a linear combination of this uh, eigenfunctions, the coefficient c i s are simply the overlap integral of the arbitrary function with the eigenfunction and the sum of the square of these coefficients are, are going to be 1. Now, we would use the, the information that we discussed uh, in today's class in, in, uh, in one example. Suppose we have this example uh, as here, we have f n are eigen functions of operator a with eigen values a n where n goes from 1 to and so on and so forth. So, it suggests that f i is so f 1, f 2, f 3. So, they form a complete they form a complete set of uh, they form a complete set of eigen functions uh, here. And my state function psi is expressed as a linear combination of only three of these functions and the other others have coefficients 0 this means. In that case what will be the outcome if I do the measurement corresponding to the observable a. So, I see I already know that the expectation value of, of corresponding to operator a is simply given as psi star a psi t tau since the wave function is not an eigenfunction of this operator a. So, therefore, what I am going to get 
is that the linear C i square a i as the outcome. What is C i star square? C i star square is the, the square of this coefficient. So, here the wave function is written as C 1 f 1 plus C 2 f 2 plus C 3 f 3. What is C 1? C 1 is 1 by 2, C 2 is 3 by 8 square root, C 3 is 3 i by 8 under square root. So, what would be C 1 square? This is 1 by 4. What would be C 2 square? absolute 3 by 8 C 3 square that is also going to be 3 by 8. Remember this is uh, there is i, so I have to take uh, C i star C i, so the complex conjugate, so that would have 3 by 8. So, what is the uh, outcome of this experiment? This, this tells that I have 1 by 4, so that means the C 1 square, square, uh, C1 star, uh, square is 1 by 4. So, that means I would get 25 percent of the time a 1 which is the eigenvalue corresponding to a function eigenfunction f 1 3 by 8 which roughly comes out to be 37 and uh, which is 37.5 percent and again uh, 37.5 percent I will observe C 2 I am sorry. Of 37.5 percent, I will observe a 2. 37.5 percent of the of the times, I would observe the eigen eigenvalue a 3. So c 2 square, c 3 square, and c 1 square, they give me an idea about what is the probability of finding an eigenvalue a 1, a 2, a 3, and so on. So this ex this exercise, this example tells us what to expect when we do a measurement corresponding to an operator a when the state of the system is not an eigenfunction. Just to remind you, when I do this measurement, the only allowed ob observables out of this exper uh, experiments are going to be the eigenvalues, nothing other than the eigenvalues are, uh, are can be observed. But the uh, fourth postulate told me, uh, told us that what should we expect, what proportion uh, in how many times in what percentage we would expect which eigenvalue. This is what the fourth postulate uh, told us. We will continue our discussion in, in uh, future classes. Thank you for your attention.